Thank you for joining me today as we talk about methods, method matching, and how does Julia call, know which method to call and how does it figure that out? Hopefully we'll do a thorough overview, although it's going to be quick. It's kind of my fault for only asking for a lightning talk. So without further ado, my name's Jameson. I work at Julia Computing now, and I've been a core Julia contributor since about 2012. So when you call the methods function, such as we do here, it returns three different methods. How did it know which ones? How does it define that order? And then how did it actually call that? So if you want to know all of the details of multiple dispatch, you may have to look at Jeff's thesis since I'm only have eight minutes here. And one of the things you have to actually know is subtyping. And while we say a lot of it tries to be obvious, it's not always as obvious as it seems at first glance. And so one of the things that I do want to look at, though, is the more specific function. And this function allows us to take something like plus one plus one and decide what's the best method to call. So if in this hypothetical example, we had this set of methods, we would probably say that plus uh, for an int and an int is a best match because um, there's some sort of like maybe set theory where you see it's the tightest match. In this case, it's also the subtype of all of the other methods here in this order. And so one of our more specific rules is indeed just whether one is a subtype of the other. However, that doesn't always cover all the cases, and sometimes we have unions, such as a union of nothing and integer, and we call that more specific. As you can see here, I'm using this less than symbol with a dot to uh, represent more specific in this presentation. And so that we could say is more specific than number because integer is more specific than number, but nothing just doesn't apply. It can't be both of those things. If those don't work to figure out which one's more spe specific, we can also look at the parameters of the function. So if the function has an integer for one and an any for another, well, the, by the same more specific rules applied recursively, we would say that it is a subtype of any, so that's a better match. We might have to look through variables to figure that out. So some of our variables might then contribute to that. And so the presence of the variable here makes it less specific than the function here with the signature that doesn't have a variable. And then finally, we might have to look at var args and we always consider not having var args to be better than a choice of method that has a var arg. And so with all those rules together, we can form this sort of tree of different possible methods that you could call for a given set of types. So there's no intersection between these two, but then we can see these are more specific and we could follow through on the different rules we saw in the previous slide to figure out which one's going to be most useful. And then there's another possibility though, which is that it's just ambiguous and none of these rules actually help us decide which one. So cases where that could happen is where we have an associativity issue. So we want our algorithm, our more specific algorithm to be associative. So we've said that if you have uh, two types where the parameters don't have a clear order, we may just have to say that there's no order at all. And this is just an ambiguous call. The other one that's actually a little more complicated to deal with is there is no transitivity. And so for example, if you had a, in, a function defined on an integer and we see that's a subtype of a union integer, float64, so that's more specific. Uh, and then the float64 is more specific than abstract float. The abstract float is a subtype of union abstract float int. And that is more specific than integer. And now we've run into a conflict where it's more specific there. And so we're going to have to declare that all of those methods are more are ambiguous for the domain in which they apply, which is int and float64. So then we've figured out what our more specific rules are. How does that actually help us? So when you call the methods of which, we're going to call these C functions jail matching methods and then ML matches. And that's going to do a type intersect over everything in the system, every single method. So yes, there is quite a few, and we do have some tricks to try to speed it up. But in general, it can be quite an elaborate call. And so it's important to note here that this is a type intersect call, and we're going to get back to that a little bit later. Then we're going to have to sort all of those matches. So we go through to sort it. We do an insertion sort. This gives us a topological sort. And we're going to then be able to figure out for everything that's not ambiguous, what is its order in the output? If there is an order between them, there may just not be an order, and that's completely fine. 
Uh, so that's why it, we call it a topological sort in this case, um, or a dominator sort because there are cycles to deal with and you don't have topological, uh, you don't have topological sorts if there are cycles. So the next thing to deal with is figuring out our cycles. So we're gonna do probably what you thought. It's pretty complicated or it's pretty, uh, a lot of work. We're gonna just have to go through every pair of methods and see are they sorted the way we thought they would be sorted? Or is there some conflict where two methods are not in the right place in the table? In which case we know that there was an ambiguity there. So we're gonna have to go through and identify each of those. But then there's a special case where we might determine that the ambiguity actually had another third method. So we're gonna go through K for all the methods again and see if there's a method that is exactly the method that resolves that ambiguity. So the ambiguity occurs, exists, but it won't actually matter in practice. And so then we'll have to go back through again and we'll merge all those numbers together to get a linear ordering and identify which ones are part of a cycle and which ones are not. Once we've done all of that, we can do some more cleanup so we can figure out if we have methods in the list that can never be called because another method for that signature is more specific always, we'll just remove those. And if we're limited, we'll even be more aggressive at removing them. So you can pass in whether you want all matches or just matches up to N and when you want only the first four, or the only matches if there's less than four of them, say, um, which is how the uh, type inference systems works, it's only gonna consider a couple methods if there's all of them. And so it's gonna skip some methods if they are already covered by earlier ones. Uh, but we do have to really keep track all throughout this algorithm. If something's ambiguous, we don't wanna remove it and then make it look like there's no ambiguity. On the other hand, if we do remove the methods and then discover that there's no ambiguity left, we don't want to declare that there's an ambiguity. So when we set the flags at the end of the method, we're not going to declare there's an ambiguity if it didn't turn out to exist for any of the functions that we're going to call. And so that's a little non-trivial to determine. And you can go look at the algorithm if you want to see how we currently do it. It's somewhat commented, so hopefully it's possible to follow along and see how that works. If you find out that our algorithm's not right, it's very possible that we have mistakes there. It's been working well, but we don't have any particular rigorous proofs that this is actually giving us exactly the methods we want. We'd be happy to hear about that. There is one other important note too, which is that this algorithm would be, would be kind of slow if we had to do this every time you called it. And so with various amounts of caching, we can make this faster. And then also because most calls are called with concrete types, we can determine that a lot of the steps we'd have to normally do actually can be bypassed. If we know that there's exactly one method that covers all of the other methods and it dominates all of them with the more specific query, then we're done. We don't have to consider whether there was ambiguities in the methods that we'll never consider. And so we can quickly go through that. So to quickly review, we have a type intersect call on everything, then we do an insertion sort on that list, so which did not start as sorted. We're gonna check for ambiguities, we're gonna remove any redundancies, and then we have our list of methods that we are going to call. Now there's one other case that we actually care about here, which is invoke. And if we're doing an invoke, it's exactly the same steps, but we're gonna start with a subtype call instead of a type intersection call, because when we call an invoke, we want to say, what is the method that's best, which covers all of these, not just which is the method that's best that covers exact, or any of these. Um, and so with that, I'm hoping this presentation will help close 45105, where someone asks, what is this thing? And if there's any questions, I'd be happy to take those.